booked and such, but uh, many of us will be stuck at the house, so we're going to have a piece. Turn with me tonight back to the book of Second Peter. Second Peter, we're still in chapter 1. Still in chapter 1. We're going to be in verses 16 through 21 tonight. Second Peter chapter 1. Verses 16 through 21 for a text. As you're preparing and getting there, finding your place in your Bible. Uh, we talked about this this morning. The title of uh, Second Peter, the series that we're going through, is Faithful Living in Difficult Times. And Peter wrote two letters, and he wrote it to the same people. And I just began to think about this as I was uh, preparing this morning's message and then getting ready for tonight as well, that... Peter wrote this to those that have been scattered, those that were in, in an obscure place, in tough times, difficult times, as, as our, our header of this series is. And he challenged them to keep stepping, keep walking. And we went through 1 Peter and we talked about that, how he told us to keep walking, walking in faith, walking in holiness, walking in all of these things. And over the last few weeks as we've entered into 2 Peter, <coughs> excuse me, he's given that challenge to them to grow up spiritually, to to look at what needs to be done. And we've been talking a lot about that. And so, really, the Lord has been preparing us for this time that we're in just through this series, just through going through First and Second Peter. Uh, he's been preparing us. And Peter was not just writing to the people of his time, but I believe he was writing to us, the hearers of today. So I'm thankful for the way the Word, the, the word of the Lord speaks to us and how the Lord speaks to us through that Word. And so we're going to look tonight... 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 16. The title of tonight's message is The Foundation of Our Faith. The Foundation of Our Faith. Beginning reading in verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard uh, when we were with him in that holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto do ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day that the day star rise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray tonight that you would add unto your servant the anointing that I need to preach your word this evening. And I pray, God, as I preach on this foundation of our faith, that you would add unto that message, the word tonight, the anointing that is needed for it to reach the heart that you're longing to reach. And I just pray, God, speak to us and speak through us tonight. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue this series tonight, we're noticing that Peter is trying to encourage us, as I said earlier, to grow in maturity in the Lord. And number two, uh, to be aware of false teachers and doctrines. And number three, uh, to be ready for the coming of the Lord. So we've got to be ready when He comes. Uh, so we do that by getting to know the Lord. We do that uh, through His Word, which is... Uh, the truth. His word is truth, and that truth of God's word will keep us from being taken in by false doctrines so that you and I can be ready when he comes back again because he is coming back. So Peter warned them, and he's warning us as well, not to forget. We talked about that last week, and we don't want to forget. That's why the preacher reminds you of that that you already know because we just want to make sure that you don't forget the things that you've been taught. And so we need to be careful to not forget these things. Remember one of the messages we talked about, having like precious faith, just like the apostles. We've got that same faith that they've had. And to understand that we've got this question, upon what foundation does that faith rest? Upon what 
foundation uh, does it rest? So we have here a leg to stand on, do we? Uh, we ask ourselves, do we have a foundation that we can build upon? Uh, Peter tells us that we do, that we have a sure foundation uh, that we can build upon. He tells us why uh, we can stand on this foundation of faith. Uh, he gives us two reasons. Number one, the testimony of eyewitnesses. Number two, the testimony of Old Testament prophecy. So, so we see the same pattern uh, continues throughout the Scriptures. Uh, Acts 2.32 tells us that this Jesus hath God raised up, uh, wherefore we all are witnesses. Uh, Acts chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, Peter was preaching at the Sanhedrin court, uh, and this is what he said. He said, but ye deny the Holy One, uh, and the, the just, uh, and desired a murderer to be granted unto to you uh, and killed the prince of life uh, whom God hath raised from the dead uh, whereof we are witnesses. Uh, and then Peter was preaching again uh, in the temple in Acts chapter 5 verses 30 through 32 and he said uh, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom you slew uh, and hanged on a tree. Uh, him hath God exalted with his right hand uh, to be a prince and a savior uh, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins and we are his witnesses of these things uh, and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. And in Acts chapter 10, Peter had gone down uh, to a man's house by the name of Cornelius. Uh, and he was preaching there to the Gentiles that were gathered. Uh, and this is what he said to them in Acts 10, verses uh, 38 through 43. He said, uh, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, uh, who went about doing good and healing uh, all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Uh, and we are witnesses of all things uh, which which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, who they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and shewed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God. God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. What is all of this? All of these verses have something in common. Witnesses. Eyewitnesses. Peter was saying that you need to understand we were eyewitnesses to these things. Peter did not get it second hand. He was eyewitness. Uh, Peter was one of the very first one uh, that Jesus called, uh, and he followed him, and he was eyewitness to these things. Uh, he's saying, I witnessed these things for myself. That's why he said in verse 16 of our text, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His majesties. What Peter was, he was an eyewitness to the things that happened to Jesus. He saw it. Uh, Peter, matter of fact, is one uh, that saw what others did not see because uh, he followed. Uh, he may have followed afar off, but he followed Him all the way to that uh, Pilate's Hall. Uh, and understand, let's look at this verse for a moment uh, where Peter shares it. He said, For we have not followed uh, cunningly devised fables. Uh, he said that he was eyewitnesses to the things that took place. Uh, he had eaten with. He had drunk with. Uh, he had slept there. Uh, he had traveled with Jesus. Uh, he knew what took place firsthand. Uh, he was a firsthand witness of it. What he was trying to tell uh, Cornelius is not to all the people, uh, but unto witnesses chose before of God, even to us, uh, who did eat and drink with him uh, after he rose from the dead. Uh, and we can find... Uh, that Peter was there in the last chapter of John, eating with him after he rose from the dead. So the gospel is not a fabrication of some fool. It's the testimony of eyewitnesses such as Peter who saw the things with their own eyes. The gospel was so true to them that they literally 
died for it. That they gave their life. He hazarded their lives to share this gospel message. Why? Because they were eyewitnesses. They were competent witnesses. They were willing to die for their testimony. Peter gives one example of himself in verses 17 and 18 of being an eyewitness when he told about his experience at the Mount of Transfiguration. He said there in verse 17, For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice in him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard uh, when we were with Him in that holy mount. So on that mount, uh, He saw Jesus transformed right before His eyes. Uh, He heard God's voice. He saw Moses. Uh, He saw Elijah that we talked about this morning. Uh, So either Peter was telling the truth uh, or Peter was telling a lie. Uh, It's just that simple. Uh, Which is more reasonable to believe that the apostles told the truth uh, or were blatant liars, frauds or deceivers uh, and we understand something in the context of the lives they lived uh, and the suffering that they endured uh, there's only one illogical explanation uh, they were not liars but they were in fact eyewitnesses uh, of his majesty uh, so that tells us something today we can believe in uh, Jesus uh, these writers were moved upon by the Holy Ghost uh, and not only were they moved by uh, the Holy Ghost to pin the words uh, but they were eyewitnesses witnesses uh, to the testimony that they shared. Uh, So we can believe in Christ. We can believe in His Word uh, because Peter gave us an eyewitness account uh, right here in his writings uh, of what really happened. Uh, But there's another way that we can know that our faith is on the solid rock. That second way is because of the Old Testament prophecies. Verses 19 and 21 of our text, he said, we have also a more sure word of prophecy Wherein do you do well that you take heed as into a light that shineth in a dark place? Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scriptures of any private interpretation. And understand, Paul said it was not done in a corner. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake, as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. What was Peter telling them? What was Peter telling us? What he was telling us here and telling them is that they had his and others eyewitness account of what happened to Jesus. And they had the Old Testament prophecies that were proven to be true when Jesus came. He fulfilled those prophecies. The Old Testament told us that Jesus was coming, but when he came, they were proven to be true. Understand something. It would be like you and I loaning someone a hundred million dollars and then anxiously awaiting them to pay it back. They told us they were going to do it, but we didn't know for sure that their word was true until the day that they actually paid it back. We did not know for sure that the Old Testament scriptures were true, not until Jesus came back. And when Jesus came on the scene, his coming proved that they were true. So Peter said, folks, we have a more sure word of prophecy now. It is the fulfilled prophecies that help support our faith in God and his word. Peter then says that we would do well to take heed to the word. Now that seems to be the problem with many today. We hear the word, but we don't heed the word. We understand something. that We've got to do more than being here of the word but we must heed the word of God we've got to act upon it as I preach to you this morning we've got to keep stepping we've got to walk in it we've got to live it out we have a tendency though to hear the word and not do anything with it what have you done with the word of God that you've heard has it just entered into your ears and then bouncing around there in your head somewhere let it get into your heart into your feet into your life and flow through you to reach others Peter's said that we would do well to take heed. Why? Why should we take heed? Because he said God's word is like a light shining in a dark place. It gives us hope. gives us direction. How many of you that's listening and watching tonight, how many of you would try to find your way through the darkness in an unfamiliar place without a light? We're somewhere we've never been before. Before we even endeavor to move around in that darkness, we're going to strike out a light. None of us is going to try to walk in darkness in some strange place. 
Yet we live in a dark world. A world that's not our home. And we don't use the light that God has given us to navigate through it. We have a light there in our possession, but yet we continue to grope in darkness. As I said a few services ago, maybe Wednesday night, uh, as we get, we've gotten used to the dark. Uh, it is true that your eyes, after a while, uh, will ju- adjust to the darkness and you'll be able to see uh, some images, but your eyes will also play tricks on you in that darkness as well. The only way to truly navigate through the darkness uh, is to let light spring forth. The only thing that penetrates darkness uh, is light, and we are the light of the world. We are that light, and that light of Jesus uh, is shining in us to be illuminated through us. uh, And His love lights our way. It's been given to us, uh, but yet many are still walking in darkness. Many people today do not make the decision based on God's Word. They do it by their own ability or their own feelings. They make their own choices so they can say, I did it my way. Many times people just go by what they want to do. They just get up and do it. I can tell you one thing. I've made a lot of mistakes by just doing what I wanted to do instead of inquiring of God first. I've had to go back and make wrongs right because I did what I wanted to do and didn't first ask God. I had to turn around and find my way back up a path. I had to start over in many instances of my life because I said I'll do what I want to do. Understand something. We'll get in trouble that way. And then when we get in trouble, many want to blame God. We want to blame God for the mistakes in our life. But my question to you is did you inquire of God before you went down that path? Did you inquire of God before you stepped into that direction. Uh, understand, we've got to go back to what I preached to you this morning. Uh, we've got to keep stepping, uh, but we've got to make sure that we keep stepping in the direction of God, uh, stepping in the direction of His will and His way. Uh, don't blame God uh, when you refuse the light that He has given you. Uh, don't blame God uh, when you refuse uh, to let His Word be a lamp under your feet and a light under your pathway, uh, and you just chose to grope in darkness uh, and try to fumble your way through the night. Uh, understand, something. Uh, We need to be like uh, those of old uh, and let Him spring in that light uh, and let Him light our way and understand uh, that He is the one that brings us that light for a purpose. For instance, we see that God says to owe no man anything but to love one another. In other words, don't get into debt. But How many of us are in debt today? You can raise your hand, nobody can see you're in your own living room, but you don't want to pick the hand raising emoji probably. But we get in the debt, don't we? How do we get in the debt? By not walking in the light of the Scriptures. And then we want to blame God for our problems. We don't want to do that. Just take heed to God's Word. See what God's Word says and make sure that we live within our means. Then Peter went on to say that we need to take heed to the Word until. Until when? He said, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. So interpreted, that means until the dawn of the day, Jesus comes, who is the day star in your heart. So Jesus was considered the day star, meaning the light bringer. And it's used here as a title of our Lord. So as we see here, we've got to believe this and live in the Word. How, why do we continue to, to keep walking in the Word as He challenged us in, in, in First Peter? How come we keep stepping as I preach this morning through the direction of God? How long do we keep walking this path? How long do we live godly in this ungodly generation? generation. How long do we toe the line? How long do we stay faithful? How long do we stay steadfast? How long do we stay anchored? How long do we stay in the church? How long do we stay in the will of God until Jesus comes? Until the coming of the Lord? Be steadfast, unmoved. He that endures until the end, the same shall be saved. Listen, child of God, there's no place to quit. No place to turn back. Finally, Peter tells us that we understand something and we need to finally know how, how we got the Word of God. Verses 20 and 21, he says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That phrase, no prophecy of the Scripture, as of any private interpretation, has been fought over for years, especially by liberals. 
but understand something. It's relatively easy to understand. Peter is not saying that the word of God did not come about because of one of the prophets' own ideas. He's saying, what Peter is saying here is it didn't come by a prophet's idea, but it came uh, as that prophet was moved upon uh, by the Holy Ghost. Uh, understand they had writer's block when they was writing the Scripture uh, if they were not moved upon by the Holy Ghost. Uh, they'd have nothing to pen and nothing worth saying uh, unless the Holy Ghost moved upon them. Uh, but because the Holy Ghost moved upon them, uh, we have this precious Word of God uh, that we find strength in. Uh, that even the world, uh, even when they don't realize it. Uh, they find encouragement and strength uh, from the words that were penned by these great men of God uh, that were moved upon uh, by the Holy Ghost. Uh, understand something that this scripture was God breathed. Uh, it came straight from God, not man made. Uh, this is not a man made Bible. Uh, this is a God breathed word. Uh, this is what we need uh, in this time that we're walking in, in difficult times. Uh, a God breathed word. Uh, so when we see the Word of God fulfilled, uh, it should do something. It should strengthen our faith. Don't grow weary in this time of difficulty that you may be facing. This time that God's Word is being fulfilled all around us. It shouldn't weaken our faith. It should strengthen our faith. It shouldn't be a time for us to get discouraged. It should be a time for us to get closer to God. We see God's Word being fulfilled. It should be a time to make us rejoice that we're soon to see Jesus come again. What did he say when you see all these things coming to pass? Look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Peter was challenging his readers that he wrote that letter to that were scattered everywhere. And he's challenging us today. It's going through difficult times. That There is a foundation that you can build upon. There is a sure foundation. It's a solid foundation. It's a faith that is sure and steadfast. Don't lose faith. It's not time to lose your faith. But it's time to make your call and your election sure. Look to the Scriptures. Look to the Scriptures. In this time of stay-at-home order, this time of isolation, this time of pulling away, don't let the Bible continue to accumulate dust, but take it up and begin to study the Word of God. Begin to search the Scriptures. Begin to make your way through the Word of God. Begin to find Bible studies. I'm seeing all over Facebook, more so than ever before, daily devotionals by pastors trying to keep their congregation encouraged. Seeing those that are starting Bible studies and doing, why did it take such tragedy for us to do such a thing? We need to stay connected. We need to stay uh, in God's Word. Uh, so get in God's Word. Get in that prayer closet. Seek the face of God. Uh, study the Word of God. Uh, understand what He's saying. He's saying study to show thyself approved. Uh, it's time to begin to build upon this foundation of faith. Don't lose faith, but look to the Scriptures and look for Jesus to come back. I believe He's coming back just like He said. The trumpet's about to sound. And we're going to be out of here. It won't be long. I believe that the signs of the time are pointing towards the coming of the Lord. We're about to be raptured out of here, church. And as I said last week, I don't want to be one of those tribulation saints. I don't want to be one of those that has a position in the church by default because the church has been taken away and now somebody has to fill that capacity. But I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready when that trumpet sounds. And I believe it can be any moment. I know there's so much going on around us, but don't look around you. Look up. Don't look to your right or your left, but look up. Don't build upon another foundation. Uh, don't be like many who said, uh, are you the one or should we seek for another? You found the one if you found Jesus. He's the only way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Jesus is the answer in your situation. Jesus is the answer to everything that we're facing right now. So hold on. Build on that faith. It's a faith that is both sure and steadfast. Let's pray tonight. Father, I'm thankful for your word. I'm thankful for this foundation of faith that we can build upon. This word of God that we can run to, that we can cling to. And Father, when the world is falling apart around us, when our lives seem to be in shambles, help us to embrace your word. 
I pray, God, that we would take and hide your word in our heart, that we may not sin against you. Help us to get into the pages of this book and begin to find life and begin to find hope, begin to find strength, even in our times of trouble. We'll be careful to praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Over several services in the past, we've brought our Bible to the altar with us. And we've taken and we've embraced that Word of God and we've prayed and sought God and had our Bible in in our clutches. I want you to do that tonight as you pray. You may have to walk into another room and pick it up if you don't have it with you. So on your way to your prayer time this evening, just take that Word of God with you. Because God may want to speak to you through His Word and you can just open it up. He'll begin to show you something. But just take that Word of God and we've talked a lot here lately about standing upon the Word. Stand. You can stand upon His Word. Not only can you stand upon His Word, you can build upon His Word. So as you enter into that prayer closet, as you enter into this time of prayer at the end of our service, your altar service, right there in your home, take time to consider what the Word of God has to say about your situation. Ask God for direction, and I believe He'll direct your paths. God bless you. We love you. Don't forget, read the book of Obadiah. It won't take you long. It's one chapter. One chapter for Wednesday night. Love you, and we'll see you back here Wednesday night. God bless you.